I have a question for you <laughs> that you can't answer. I have a question for you that you can't answer. I have a question that nobody in here, including myself, can answer. And that question is, what's the value of your attitude? What's the value of your attitude? Priceless? Now, doesn't the value of a person's attitude really depend on whether they're a positive person or a negative person? I mean, isn't it the oldest thing in the book whether the glass is what? Half full or half empty, isn't it? I mean, the value of your attitude goes so far as whether you believe tomorrow is going to be better than today or whether you think tomorrow is going to be worse than today. I mean, it's how positive you are or how negative you are, isn't it? That's the value of your attitude. And the reason that you can't answer that question is because the value of our attitude has yet to be determined. You see, you could be the most negative person in the world up until today, and then you could choose to have a positive attitude most of the time from here on out, couldn't you? And the opposite is true. You could have been super positive all the way until today, and then something could happen, and you could choose to be negative most of the time. And that goes a long way to determining the value of your attitude. It's something we don't think about a lot. You think about the value of your car. You think about the value of your house. When a high school kid walks into school on Monday and he's got a new pair of shoes, doesn't everybody in the school know the value of those shoes? I think one of the quickest ways to increase the value of your attitude, to be positive most of the time, I think one of the quickest ways is to chase your dreams. So for just a minute, I want everyone to close your eyes. And I want you to think of something that you want to accomplish in the future. I want you to think of a dream that you have that you want to capture and you want to accomplish in the future. For just 30 seconds, if you will, close your eyes and think of that dream. All right, in your mind, if you've got something you want to accomplish in the future, I want you to stand up right now. I heard a few groans. So if you've got a dream or something you want to accomplish in the future, you should be standing. Hint, that should be everyone in here should be standing. Now I want you to remain standing if you've ever taken that dream and captured it on a piece of paper. Remain standing if you've ever taken that dream and written it down somewhere. So what I'm asking you, if, if you've ever done some form of goal writing, remain standing. If you haven't, that's OK. That's why we're here. So everybody standing has done some form of goal writing. Stay standing if you can physically show me your goals right now. Stay standing if you can pull out of your pocket, pull out of your phone, somewhere on you. If you can physically show me your goals, stay standing. One, two, three, four. Amy? She's looking. Okay, why don't you give these people who are still standing a big round of applause, right? And I'm just gonna trust that you have it in your email so you can quit looking and, okay. So almost everybody here has done some form of goal writing. And I'll think that almost everybody here knows the value of planning 
I'm just going to go out, a limb, out on a limb and say that, that you know the value of planning. And you know that if you're chasing a dream, if you want to accomplish a dream, it's going to happen quicker if you write it down. Very few people here would get in a car in New York City and drive to Los Angeles unless in your car you had a road map or some sort of what? GPS. GPS. Almost nobody in here would think of going from New York to LA without having a road map in the car or some form of GPS. I think we can agree on that. If we can agree, say yeah. 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 See, your life plan is a lot like a GPS. If you get lost in your car and you don't have a road map or a GPS, what will, with the exception of guys, what will women do if you get lost in a car? You will stop and ask for directions. Guys will too, it just takes a lot longer, usually. <laughs> And when you stop and ask for directions from a complete stranger, do they always give you good advice? No. no. If you ask directions from someone do you know, do they always give you good advice? No. no. So you're telling me, I think as a whole, we wouldn't get in the car in New York City, and we would not try to drive to LA without having some kind of guidance system. And yet, most of you in here are telling me that you get up in the morning, and you go traveling somewhere without a life GPS. This is what you're telling me. So you might have a plan somewhere, but you don't have it on me. So you're telling me you're traveling around without a life GPS. I think this is what you're telling me. And what happens if you get lost in life? Do you, oh, ask for, Google it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because everything in Google is true. <laughs> so when you get lost in life, do you stop and ask a complete stranger where you should go? Sometimes. And if you do, do you get good advice? If you get lost in life, do you ask someone that you know what to do? Probably. Do you always get good advice? In June of 1999, I paid $499, and I went to a goal-setting seminar. And I got one of those big, huge three-ring binders with all the CD-ROMs and the action steps. You know which one I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. And during that seminar, one of the exercises we did that one of the leaders had us do was take out a piece of paper and write down 10 goals. And write down 10 goals. And I was so excited and I was so jacked about this program and, and goal setting and all the things that I wanted to do. And when I got home that night, I took that three ring binder. And you know what I did with that three ring binder? <laughs> Were you there? <laughs> I did the same thing most of us do with a three ring binder we get at a seminar. I put it on the bottom shelf in my office and it gets covered up by what we call dust, sure, <laughs> life, doesn't it? But for some reason, that night, I sat at my computer and I typed in those 10 goals on my computer. Own a house. Get a steady girlfriend. <laughs> That could be another one, have children. Give a speech someday and get paid to give a speech. And I typed in those goals. And they didn't say anything about this in the seminar. But for some reason, I printed it out and I stuck it in my pocket. Stuck it in my pocket. The very next morning, my boss called me. And my boss and I, we had a real estate partnership together. He called me, he said, hey, Matt, Let's go to lunch. And I said, perfect, it sounds great, because this was usual. So we went to lunch, and my boss started asking me all these questions. He said things like, what are you going to do with your life? I'm like, what do you mean, what am I going to do with my life? You make good money, but you don't have a lot of savings, do you? No, not really. There's a lot of girls around, but you don't have a steady girlfriend, do you? No. 
I didn't think that one was all that bad. He said, you know what? He said, you need a written plan for your life. You need written goals. And I said, uh, what, what did you say? He said, you need a written plan. I said, just one more time. Because what did I do the night before? So I went back from the table and I stood up and I grabbed my wallet and my boss Ken said, don't worry, I'll pay for lunch again. I said, oh, you're paying for lunch. I said, here are my goals, dad. Can I see yours? You think he had any written goals? No. You see, if you don't have a written plan, and if you don't carry it with you, you're going to spend your entire life working for someone else's plan, aren't you? See, up until then, who was the captain of my ship? My dad was, wasn't he? And doesn't the ship go where the captain wants it to go? See, and we had a real estate partnership. We would buy and sell houses and fix up apartments. And when I say we would buy them, who do you think own the properties? Yeah. And when I said we would fix them up, who do you think fixed up the properties? <laughs> See, and this is a great partnership, isn't it? And as I'm busting up concrete out on an old sidewalk we had to tear up, all I could think about was chasing my dream of someday being a speaker. That's all I could think about. But I wasn't getting a lot closer, was I? Breaking up the concrete. And out of the air-conditioned office came my dad. And he wasn't quite satisfied on how I was breaking up the concrete. So I threw down my pick and my sledgehammer, and I left, and I quit. And as I was leaving, he said, well, why don't you go give a speech? <laughs> and I said, Dad, I did give a speech. And I got paid to give a speech. And now I'm going to go do it some more. You see, if you don't capture your dreams and carry them with you, they're just dreams floating around. They're just dreams floating around. What I learned from that experience is if you want your dreams to come true, you've got to capture them somehow. You've got to write them down. You gotta stick them in your phone. You gotta put them on a piece of paper. You gotta put them in your computer. You gotta put them on an email somewhere. You gotta capture them, otherwise they're just dreams. When you capture them, it becomes powerful. And I also learned you gotta carry them with you. Because there's something really cool about carrying them with you. And when someone says your dream is stupid, you can pull out your list. And you can say, yeah, it might be stupid to you, but it's on my list. Can I see your list? And how many people are going to have a list? How about you? Do you carry your goals? Have you captured your goals? I'm going to challenge you at the break to capture your goals, even if it means just capturing one goal that you're going to complete this exercise later. If that's your goal, do it. I challenge you to capture them and carry them with you. My name is Matt Booth. I'm chasing my dream. And I love to speak to people who are interested in improving. If you have an event where you think I might be a good fit, I would love to talk to you. Thank you.